relationship really and it was great to meet him again. what you got out of it yourself when you were when you were managing the team of Bar Hart, what I can see now after this year with the with the other team and in the failure was absolutely brilliant. I mean the day we won it down in Park here in Cork, I definitely jumped five foot off the ground and I was watching you some of your tapes go back and I was saying it's the same buzz, it's the very same buzz as being on the field playing. I mean if we want to have a future, I think that's the way and it's great to see you doing it and it was fantastic. I mean to think your club could win your girls win four in a row, Fela, and then your boys win as well. No club in Ireland's ever done that. It just happened to be a brilliant year, like, and I mean, uh, everything sort yeah, of went right. for a right. rural parish, though, Martin, for a rural parish to go down and, and win the two Premier uh, Championships. I mean, it's incredible. And you hear of all the teams that won it, but you were more even, weren't you? You had a, you had a terrific team of, of brilliant youngsters, like, all at the same standard. I suppose the honesty of the young lads is the best thing of the whole lot. I mean, don't give a damn about Martin's story. 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 That's not, great. Not a bit in the world. And they'll even say things to you like, uh, my daddy said you'd be as good as DJ Carey if you were able to do this or that. And I say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, that's great, you know. <laughs> We're going to stop now here in Wexford and have arranged to meet some of the greatest hurlers of all time, as far as I'm concerned, great Wexford men, uh, Ned Wheeler and Billy Rackard. Billy, of course, being one of the three famous Rackard brothers, Billy, Bobby and Nicky. Whatever Wexford men ever made a journey by train to Dublin, there wouldn't have been a journey without Nicky Rackard because he's the man who started Wexford hurling in many respects. Uh, the hurling, uh, well, it's not going too bad, but uh, you fellas started all this, of course. You know we're trying to get a, a statue to Nicky. Well, there's no question that, that he, he, he was the catalyst, to, 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 you know, uh, the, to, that brought on the team and improved the standard of hurling. Uh, he, he was very ins inspirational. His speeches at halftime were awe-inspiring. Awe-inspiring. He lifted the blood if you you often fell down and drained at half time and Nicky Seward were different. Yeah. And he But of all the hurling men I think in, 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 in Wexford, I, I think it's fair to say that if you were going to put something up to erect something to to, to, to honour all of the great hurling men, I suppose well, you could I mean, be better. That's what you'd be doing really. I think if you if you put Nicky up there, you're indirectly honouring the men of the fifties. As we pull out of Wexford station now we go on to the quay side in, in Wexford. One particular evening, coming back from, from Dublin with a GAA special after Wexford had won the All-Ireland Hurling Final, the jubilant Wexford fans were in such a frenzy that he even climbed over the tops of the train. <laughs> All in good spirit, yeah, it was, it was good fun. As I approach Ross Lair, the memories really come flooding back. The emigration that happened at that time and remember meeting my mother off the Ross Lair train and seeing it packed to capacity with people heading for the Ross Lair ships to emigrate to England and beyond. And in fact, there's very few families in the country that weren't hit by immigration. My eldest brother went that emigration trail and never came back like so many other people's brothers. Barry Carrick Hotel is where my real base in Wexford is now. And I'm proud of the fact that Wexford Town's first four-star hotel is something that we made a contribution to, so that's, that's something special. This is where I spend my working life. And I made that conscious decision many years ago when I worked in Dublin. I always wanted to go home. And I think 
the thoughts of home and hurling and the influence and the background that I had, all of those images brought me back. And I must say, I'm glad I made that decision and I'm glad I've come back to live it in my own county. Quite honestly, it is a special place and it's a place that I'm glad to rear my own family in also. I've been involved with youngsters since way before I took over the Wexford job, and I have been since. And you worry now with modern living and with the urge to be spectators rather than participants, and with the whole social upheaval in the way we live and the way family life has changed so much since my time. You have to worry about how the game will develop from now. I find children have changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Their levels of concentration, their levels of commitment, and it is a worry. Hopefully, it's only a transient thing, but still, there's a serious doubt there as to whether the same desire is there to do things that we thought were so important. You know, after that win in '96, it was an amazing, an amazing feeling within the county, and strangely enough. You stand back like a spectator, even though you were central to the thing. It truly was an amazing outpouring. I have never experienced anything like it in my lifetime, and probably never will again. So